So on that note, like with you having done, because you, you weren't tracking your macros at all while, while you've been in the sugar diet. You've been doing it for about six months now? I've been doing about six months and I've only tracked a little bit just using like chat GPT and just, you know, going back and forth with that. And I would say, you know, 600 to 1,000 grams of carbohydrate, maybe a, maybe 1,000 is only something I've done a couple of times, but maybe 600 to 800 grams of carbohydrate. Protein was like 150, 100 maybe per day ish. And then um, fat was just like, try not to eat any. Yeah. So th maybe 30 grams of fat uh, in a day, depending on how much meat I ate in that day, or if I ate meat at all. Cause there were some days where I didn't, I didn't consume anything other than the simple sugars. And so from a total caloric ingestion standpoint, is that about what you were consuming? Cause you were doing pretty much carnivore prior to this experiment, right? My, my body's wired pretty good. You know, I'm going to get the calories like my bot, like it's just, I, um, yeah, if I, if I don't eat enough, then the next couple of days I'm, I'm so I'm just ravenously hungry. Yeah. So my body is calibrated for probably around 3000 to 3,500 calories somewhere in that neighborhood. Yeah. That's typically what I'm doing as well. 3,300 or so is my, my average. Um, unless I go to a Brazilian steak house and it might be a little higher. Um, but I was, I was looking at a lot of the research cause I just did a, a two week stint of a similar FGF 21 protocol, but with incredibly high fat and very, you know, minimal protein, minimal carbohydrates. Cause some assume that the efficacy of the sugar diet is by way more so of the lack of protein. Um, so like, I think throughout that experiment, I was consuming less than 9% of my calories coming from protein, which is pretty low, even though I've oftentimes played around with lower protein. So do you think the findings that you've had have been more so a result of the high sugar or just minimal protein compared to what you're typically consuming? I think for me personally, because of my background with mainly eating less carbohydrate, I think that the carbs were really helpful. I can't say that would be true of everybody else. Um, but yeah, the basis of the sugar diet, the honey diet, um, some of this stuff uh, got kicked around and, and, and boosted up from all kinds of different spots. You know, some people believe it's from some of Ray Pete's work and Ray Pete was into uh, talking about, you know, ways to increase the metabolic rate that didn't include necessarily like lifting just included like what you ate, which I think that that, is, that in and of itself is really fascinating to me. I have not really heard many people talk about that. It's normally like somebody wants to lose weight, you find a base calorie intake, maybe some coaches take people up on calories a little bit for a couple of weeks or a month, and then they start to bring them back down. And we always just adhere to this thing of like, the calories are gonna have to be a lot lower, but with this diet, what was found in some of the studies was, and there's not a lot of studies. I think there's only one human study, and then there's a couple studies on mice. What they think is happening is your body produces something called FGF21, and they believe that FGF21 helps to boost your metabolism. The What they saw was what they believed to be about a 20% increase in your metabolism. That's quite, a, that's quite a bit if that's truly what's happening. I, I don't think anybody truly knows whether this is exactly what's going on in the body, um, but at least in accordance to that study and probably in accordance to some of the people that have had success on the sugar diet, maybe that is what's happening. Um, I do think that fructose in certain amounts, I think can be really, and carbohydrate can be really beneficial to uh, having the body kind of keep this you know, flame, if you will, of uh, keeping the body temperature maybe a little bit hotter. I don't have anything to support that. It's just a theory of mine. I know, again, if you go back to Ray Pete, he was really big on having people uh, measure their, uh, it, he would have people use a ther thermometer in the morning to measure their, um, yeah, measure their temperature. And he was saying that people should be a little bit higher than I think, what, 98.6 is what's usually recommended. And he was saying like, it should be a little bit higher. And he fi helped people figure that out via not just carbohydrate in particular, but even uh, more specifically like dairy and a bunch of other things uh, because the calcium and those kinds of things can help your thyroid stimulating hormone. I believe I may have some of this wrong. I'm not like, 
I'm not crazy into the Ray Pete stuff, but I know a little bit about it. So these are all things that people kind of have proposed. But yeah, I do think that carbohydrates, at least in my experience so far, in my experience when I did do a bodybuilding show, they seem to increase some sort of thermic effect uh, for me. And again, sometimes it might be hard to tell with me because even when I did do a bodybuilding diet, I was still coming from a keto diet. So I did a bodybuilding style diet for like 10 weeks, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But I had a preload of, of uh, being, I guess you'd say like metabolically flexible. I also have been a person that even in my keto dieting, I have used carbohydrates, maybe a little bit more like uh, Dominic D'Agostino where I didn't always just flatline my carbohydrates. Um, so yeah, that's some of my, that's some of my history, but I do think the carbohydrates were, were helpful and supposedly they boost FGF 21 as well, but I don't really know. Yeah. Everything. I mean, like I said, there's not a whole lot of studies, everything I've read up on it. There was a study done in 2025. So this year, um, looking at participants and they were not trying to lose weight necessarily. They just had, they found that they needed to increase calories by like 20% or whatever to just maintain weight. Uh, but they were doing by it by way of minimal protein consumption to also boost FGF 21 hormone. That's kind of what I modeled my experiment off of because I'm not trying to lose weight right now either. So I basically went up to 4,000 plus calories and then 9% of which were coming from protein. And over the two week span, like I didn't really gain any weight. That's not very much time, but my testosterone more than doubled, which I thought was super interesting. Um, yeah, so I'd, I'd be curious to see if the same experiment was done with the higher carbohydrate relative to fat, but also minimal protein, what its effect on hormones would be. Um, and I didn't test for FGF 21 specifically, obviously, so I don't know there, uh, but it did make me think, okay, if we can elevate that by way of the minimal protein in a short term, you're having a favorable effect on sex hormones and metabolic rate. That can be adv advantageous if you're in a prep or if you're trying to like cycle that in during a building phase or something like that. So. I'm, I've got my client that's in a prep right now doing that this week, actually. So we'll kind of see what the, the data shows afterwards. But but yeah, I'd be, I don't know, man. Like, I'm all about longevity as well. Like, what can I do and stick with for a lifetime? And I feel like the low protein, I don't think we need as much protein as often as, you know, suggested. Because um, protein's kind of seeing its limelight halo days right now. Everybody's pushing for more and more protein. I think you can and should use it as a lever to pull. Um, but I mean, at 9% of calories coming from protein for me, that was like less than hundred grams a day, which probably wouldn't be optimal long-term. You know, I think, you know, if you think about like our history, it's not always good to like dive into our ancestry. Cause like people just ate whatever they could eat to like stay alive, you know, and we stayed alive doing a lot of weird stuff, you know, um, being drunk is one of them or being high is another one, you know, like we, we figured out ways to stay alive, uh, you know, through alcohol and through coffee and th things that, I don't know, things that are like, you wouldn't really not necessarily recognize like being healthy. Um, but I think that if you're to think about it, you know, why would, why would there be any increase in anything in your body if you're not eating protein? And my only guess would be that maybe somehow your body's trying to sequester some sort of energy to give you um, like a, uh, a second wind, if you will, give you more energy, supply you with energy, allow you to liberate more energy off of your body um, so that you can still go and get protein because you, you maybe had to hunt for it, you had to kill something, but all you're getting is like these little shrubs and little berries a little bit here and there and you're just, you're barely surviving and you're about to die. You're on day five of the sugar diet you know, a thousand years ago and you're withering down to nothing. And maybe the metabolic rate does uh, increase a little bit to, because sometimes when you get hungrier, right, your focus can increase. Some, some of us know this from doing fasting or intermittent fasting, or even being on a ketogenic diet, which sometimes can mimic some of the results of, of fasting. And you get your, your brain starts to get like wired in and focused in. And so maybe it was something that would, you know, help us to make a last ditch effort to get, to get more food or get more protein. That's kind of the only thing I can think of as to like why the body would do it. But I think the human body is so tricky. 
you know, and I've always been kind of touting, like, I think it's a mistake to try to science the body. I think the body's more beautiful and more, um, uh, it's harder to define than we can even possibly imagine. Like we have a hard time defining it now. Um, we had a guest on the show the other day talking about like fascia and talking about these different parts of the body and your, um, your big toe and your, uh, your, um, uh, your, your plantar fascia and your, and your heel and your Achilles tendon. He's like, everything's all just one thing. It's like your fascia is just this like big sack. Everything's just like one thing, but we have to call things a bunch of different names so that we know what the hell we're talking about. And he said, the ocean is the same way. You know, there, there's, there's seven oceans, but they're all, they're all connected <laughs> at some point. And so there, it's really just one, it's this one giant uh, body of water, but we call Atlantic, Pacific, Indian, and so forth to give us uh, locations, to try to give us things to describe. And I think the human body is complex that way too, where it's hard to know when somebody comes online, they say, hey, this is, this is what I'm doing, this diet that I'm doing, and it's really working great for me. We don't know the other changes that may have happened in that person's life. Um, first of all, I mean, they could be on TRT, which they, they never mentioned, right? So that's, you know, that's an obvious one, but they also could have had just a really big change in their life. Maybe they never really dieted before. Maybe they never had much of a diet protocol. And now they finally found one that they can actually stick to. And so the results of that ketogenic diet or high carb, low fat diet that they just did, it really had a huge impact on them. Not so much because of the diet, it had a huge impact on them because they could actually stick to it. So it's really hard to get the right context and to figure out who the hell's actually talking about what and what does it mean? We hear a lot of talk about vitamin D and then you're like, well, are we talking about like the vitamin D that's naturally in your body from getting sunlight? Are we talking about the supplement vitamin D Hear The same thing about creatine. Like you can go in the gym and do creatine like workouts and have your brain go on fire from doing explosive movements and training yourself to be more and more explosive over time. I would say that beats the hell out of, anything you're going to do longevity wise in taking a creatine supplement. I mean, it's just going to blow that. Away. There's not even close. And the same thing with the vitamin D thing. It's like, get outside, you know? So it's very hard to like sort of break all these things down and try to figure out where's any of it coming from. And on top of that, there's monetary gain uh, that can be associated with a lot of these things. So it makes it even more difficult to figure out.